again. My name is Gabe Zolna. Saw something interesting on uh, Fox News. Every once in a while they have something of interest. Actually, it's quite often. But I do notice that they're beginning to sort of skew things and they're going more a little bit to the left, less from the way they used to be off to the right. But anyway, that's a different story. What I saw was they had the uh, ambassador, the ex-ambassador, John Bolton, uh, he was on, and um, he was um, being asked questions about Ashir Assad, who's uh, the president of uh, Syria. And pretty much what he said is that uh, ideally it'd be uh, good if, if uh, Ashir Assad and his family and a number of other key supporters were able to find a country that they could go to where they wouldn't be persecuted or prosecuted for their many crimes against their own people to the tune of 40,000 that have supposedly been slaughtered over the past two years. Well, I've got a couple of questions of, of either Fox News or of uh, Ambassador Bolton. And I, I guess the biggest question is, how do you know that it was Assad and his forces that slaughtered these people? You see, what's really interesting is for 40 years, when Assad's father threw out uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, there was pretty much peace, you know? Uh, they respected, uh, whether it was out of fear or whether it was out of uh, just mutual respect, Israel's position to exist. And they pretty much, uh, you know, they had a couple of conflicts now and then, but overall, they got along fairly well. Uh, and all of a sudden, what caused him to turn against his own people? Who in their right mind would turn against their own people? Hmm. Well, is it at all possible, and this is just hypothetically speaking, that uh, Obama was able to provide a certain number of radical extremist Muslims? Because, you know, a few of those do exist, you know, I mean, they really do exist. Is it possible that he's able to provide them with some weapons? And then they started going around killing methodically, mainly Christians, because, you know, Christians, Muslims don't like Christians. They don't like Jews either, but they don't like Christians. So all of a sudden, people are getting killed. And who's getting blamed for it? Well, obviously, uh, the guy that's getting blamed for it is the president of Syria. Now, why do you think that would be? Hmm. Well, if you were to ask me, and I'm not you know, I'm not in tune to what's really going on. But if you were to ask me, I would say that Obama is behind the movement. And it's no different than he was behind the movement in Libya. You know, he wanted to get rid of Gaddafi because Gaddafi also kept out the Brotherhood. And now who's sort of in control of Libya? Well, I think we saw that when uh, Ambassador Chris Stevens got slaughtered with those other three Americans, you know. But anyway... We're not talking about Libya. Let's stay on Syria. See, the key here is to get rid of Assad. Because again, both he and his daddy, they kept the Brotherhood out of the country for over 40 years. And now, all these people are getting slaughtered and he's getting blamed for it. I guess what they want to do is they want to drive him out of Syria. Now, why do you think that would be? Well, let me guess. Well... I know they want him out of Syria, so the group that's sort of, you know, making this happen by trying to give him a push, you know, they're, they're killing each other, they can take control of Syria. Now, who do you think that's going to be? Well, I don't know, but I think if you were to take a real wild guess, and if you said the Brotherhood, and they were the Muslim Brotherhood, you'd probably be right. So let's see now. They're going to have control real soon of Syria. And oh, by the way, if Assad doesn't move out of there soon, I think Obama's going to help give him a push, just like he did in Libya. You know, when Gaddafi's forces needed a little bit of uh, whacking, Obama sent in the Air Force. Yeah, they did a good job. Didn't take them long at all, no. And I can see him doing the same thing in Syria just to get this thing done because it's sort of been dragging for a couple of years, you know? And 
we've got to get the brotherhood established so they can clean house, get rid of the Christians, get rid of the Jews. We don't want Jews there for sure. And then you're going to have the brotherhood having total and complete control of most of the Middle East. And whatever countries like are still not controlled by them, like Jordan, well, it won't be long before Jordan goes the same way. I guarantee you that as soon as Obama's finished shoving high-grade weapons into Syria, they're going to get diverted into Jordan. Because in Jordan, too, they got a lot of bad guys that want to take over control. You can't have most of that part of the world under Sharia law and not a little country like Jordan. That wouldn't be right. So that's going to get knocked off next. Who's behind all this? Hmm. Well, I got to believe that the guy that's behind it is the same guy that did nothing in Egypt. When they got rid of Mubarak, he was only there for 35 years. And Obama got rid of him because, you know, he didn't offer him any support. Didn't say, hey, you know what, we don't want you guys to have an uprising. Go to it. That was his attitude. And who have they got there now? Oh, they got a great guy. Yeah, he was always with the Brotherhood, and now he's president. Huh? Mohammed. Mohammed. Yeah. Morsi. And he's a good guy. Okay, he's got a criminal record. We're not all perfect. And yeah, he caused himself some problems because he called himself like the Pharaoh, you know, the, the Messiah, the, the top banana, the kahuna. That caused some problems. But he's working his way through that. He's becoming a little bit more accommodating. Anyway, and look what's going to happen to Israel. Hmm. They don't have very many friends left in that part of the world. They certainly don't have Obama for a friend. No. And they don't have Iran for a friend. No. And they're soon not going to have any friends out there. So what do you think is going to happen to them? I don't know. But I don't think it's looking too good. And it's really sad. Because you know what the Bible says? They're the chosen ones. Yeah. I'm not saying that. That's what the Bible says. And for them to get destroyed, well, God ain't going to be all that happy. I'm actually surprised that God's allowed this insanity to go as long as it has. But I guess he's just sitting back and seeing if the American people are really that stupid. The Democrats have proven they're that stupid, especially the Jewish ones like Feinstein and Boxer. Huh? They've shown that they're stupid. But there still might be light at the end of the tunnel. Not much. But there might be light. A couple of court cases still coming up. One may be in Alabama and one in California. And who knows what Sheriff Joe and Mike Zulu might come up with with the cold case posse. They might come up with something that people are really going to take notice of. I sure hope so. Because I'm getting real tired of this bozo flying all over the place in Air Force One at the cost of $187,000 an hour. Yeah. That's what it costs just for it. And that doesn't include the C-17s with his Cadillacs and his helicopters and the Secret Service vehicles and to fly Bo around. Bo's got to go on his own airplane as well. So, you know, you look at all the savings we could have, right? I mean, that's pretty phenomenal. I'm hoping it ends real soon. How about you?